Good morning. Xin chào tất cả các anh chị và các bạn đã tham gia webinar sáng nay cùng VMMA. Và trong webinar ngày hôm nay chúng tôi sẽ chia sẻ nhiều hơn về hành vi của người tiêu dùng đã thay đổi như thế nào trong suốt thời kỳ Covid-19 và sự ảnh hưởng đến các doanh nghiệp. Chắc chắn hôm nay chúng ta sẽ có những phần thông tin rất là hữu ích để mà các doanh nghiệp có thể hiểu hơn về người tiêu dùng của mình cũng như có một số những bước chuẩn bị cho kế hoạch tiếp theo. Và sự đồng hành trong cái báo cáo ngày hôm nay là chúng ta có sự tham gia của đối tác vùng đó là Survey Sinsong và sự hỗ trợ của Estima. Xin cảm ơn hai đối tác đã support MMA trong cái project này. Và trước khi bắt đầu chính thức chương trình ngày hôm nay, tôi là Phan Bích Tâm, đại diện của MMA ở Việt Nam. Tôi xin chia sẻ một số những cái thông tin về MMA ở thị trường global. Thì chúng tôi có hơn 800 corporate member, đó là thành viên là các công ty chứ không phải là cá nhân ở năm châu lục trên khắp thế giới từ 50 quốc gia khác nhau. Và với điều đó thì MMA phục vụ chính nhóm đối tượng là các nhà tiếp thị và chúng tôi mong muốn mang đến nhiều giải pháp tốt hơn để giúp các nhà tiếp thị làm tốt câu chuyện marketing đặc biệt là sử dụng các công cụ và trong đó là mobile marketing. MMA có rất nhiều các chương trình hỗ trợ cho ở các thị trường các nước, cả cả thị trường Việt Nam cũng đã thực hiện rất nhiều các chương trình trong cái trong cái danh sách trước mắt mà các anh chị đang thấy. À, trong đó có giải thưởng Smarty là một trong những giải thưởng quen thuộc ở thị trường Việt Nam, CEO CMO Submit là một trong những cái hội nghị rất là quan trọng dành cho nhóm các nhà tiếp thị ở thị trường Việt Nam. Chúng tôi cũng có một thư viện số rất lớn về mobile case study và cũng như là có rất nhiều những guideline best practice đã được ứng dụng ở thị trường Việt Nam trong suốt hơn 8 năm qua và một số những chương trình quan trọng của MMA như là Smart, MATT, Most Hated Chef, đó là một số những chương trình đã được launch ở thị trường Việt Nam. Và chúng tôi cũng có đón nhận sự tham gia từ tất cả các nhà tiếp thị cho tất cả những chương trình global như thế này. Đây là một số các chương trình webinar sắp tới. Như các anh chị đang thấy, từ ngày 26 tháng 5 cho tới ngày 5 tháng 6, chúng ta có rất nhiều các chương trình khác nhau. Ở trong đó có một số những webinar đã dành riêng cho thị trường Việt Nam. Ví dụ như chúng ta có... Um, webinar sắp tới trong thứ sáu này là ngày 29 tháng 5 là Winning Test 2021 có sự tham gia của đối tác Estima à, Chúng tôi rất mong muốn tất cả các anh chị sẽ tiếp tục đồng hành cùng với MMA trong chương trình webinar sắp tới và chúng ta hoàn toàn có thể cập nhật tin tức từ tất cả webinar này thông qua đường link là mmacorporal.com webinar Tất cả những webinar đã được thực hiện cũng có lưu hết tất cả các thông tin ngay trên website global Và đây là một số những cái sáng kiến, một số những chương trình hành động mà MMA đã thực hiện trong suốt nhiều năm qua. Ví dụ các anh chị thấy chúng ta về có về đo lường, chúng ta có mobile grammatic, chúng ta có mobile video, có location. Đó là một số những cái initiative rất là quan trọng và MMA đã loan trong rất nhiều năm và cái sự đồng hành của rất nhiều các cái marketer, agency và officer trên 50 quốc gia khác nhau. Và để tương tác với diễn giả chúng ta ngày hôm nay, các anh chị hoàn toàn có thể đặt câu hỏi qua phần question ngay trên control panel bất kỳ câu hỏi nào chúng tôi cũng sẽ xem xét và chuyển cho diễn giả trả lời kể cả câu hỏi bằng tiếng anh hay tiếng việt là đều được chúng tôi sẽ phiên dịch câu hỏi từ tiếng việt sang tiếng anh để mà diễn giả mình có thể trả lời còn trong trường hợp các anh chị có thể đặt câu hỏi sang tiếng anh thì sẽ rất là tốt bởi vì phần lớn người tham dự của chúng ta trong quốc việt nam ngày hôm nay là người việt nam đó là lý do vì sao mà tôi cũng chia sẻ mọi thứ bằng tiếng việt tuy nhiên diễn giả chúng ta sẽ chia sẻ bằng tiếng anh vì đó là người nước ngoài và hôm nay chúng ta có diễn giả tham gia cùng MMA ngoài phía đại diện của MMA là Rohit Dadwar là giám đốc điều hành ở khu vực châu Á Thái Bình Dương thì chúng ta có chuyên gia anh Razi Lampa là Global Managing Director từ Survey Sensong sẽ cung cấp rất nhiều cái thông tin hay từ chúng ta. Welcome our speaker Razi Lampa, Global Managing Director from Survey Sensong. And thank you so much for our speaker today, especially for Survey Sensong and Atma in Kanta, Vietnam together for this report. Thank you so much. And now we jump into the presentation. I would like to invite our speaker. Uh, bây giờ chúng ta sẽ đến với phần chia sẻ của diễn giả chúng ta ngày hôm nay. Bất Tâm sẽ chuyển cái quyền control cho anh Razi. Razi, um, I will change the presenter control to you now. Sure. Uh, thanks, Jessica. So I hope that you guys can see my screen and, and thanks for every, everyone who has attended the webinar today and thanks to MMA for you know partnering for this particular webinar so the objective of this particular webinar is to understand uh, how consumers and businesses uh, what are the sentiments in Vietnam what is going to be the new normal how things are going to shape up in Vietnam most probably 
post covid situation so for this particular uh, project uh, we partnered with a company called atima they are the leader in mobile segment in vietnam and they helped us to to capture the consumer responses and of course we also had a partnership with mma to understand some responses from the business segment so what you're going to see today is what consumers are are talking about and how businesses and organization are responding to the to the entire covid situation and what's the way forward so for this particular project for today uh, we covered more than 600 consumers in vietnam this was done through online research where we reached out to different income class male female age was 15 plus and we asked them some some questions about their consumer behavior was changing during this time how they are likely to behave in the future and this is very recent data has just been done two or three weeks back so this represents the recent consumer sentiments in vietnam apart from that we also reached out to business which are organizations like us so here we reached out to more than 66 business enterprises where we asked them what is the sentiment towards covid how are businesses changing their strategies we reached out to many many companies like consumer goods telecommunication automotive insurance across different roles so that will basically cover the entire business sentiment so in this report you're going to see a mix of consumer as well as business sentiment in vietnam again thanks to atima i'll just mention them again uh, they have been uh, very helpful in getting us the the entire consumer responses this was done through using a mobile online survey where the survey was sent to more than 600 respondents across different different demographics as well as cities in vietnam and this response was well captured by us using our platform and in addition to this uh, we have also used some other sources of data uh, especially cantar we picked up some of the data from cantar so in this particular presentation i also want to thank cantar for for providing that data sources and you'll be able to see some of the trends which cantar has ca captured along with service sensor so let's deep dive into the sentiments let's start with consumer sentiments in vietnam and here we will want also want to draw some comparison in comparison to other countries in in apac so as you can see in the data here the concerns in vietnam of course uh, people are still worried so overall more than 60 percent consumers they feel that they're worried about the current situation but in vietnam it's relatively less in comparison to other cities which i think has also been reflected in the way economy has behaved recently things have started opening up in vietnam so the concerns are relatively lesser in comparison to other other countries like india or indonesia but when we look at the data by by income income groups we saw the lower and middle income groups in vietnam are relatively more concerned in comparison to upper class which is very understandable so when we ask consumers in how many months they think they feel that the things will become better people they mentioned that it consumers they mentioned in next couple of months things will improve and this survey was just done two weeks back so it means consumers are optimistic that the situation will will go back to normal around july which is far more optimistic in comparison to other countries but among the working class which is 25 to 34 this average in vietnam is around 3 months so they they feel that it might take slightly longer in comparison to other age groups so when we look at the data whether people are concerned about their job losses of course still as i mentioned the job losses 62 percent are still concerned about facing a job loss by them or their families they are not too worried about shortages of supplies of the essentials but the worry on job losses are still high in vietnam relatively lower in comparison to other countries but still is is, is around uh, 62 percent which is higher number and when we look at this data among 25 to 34 that, that data is around 68 percent which means 25 to 34 are relatively more worried they might be the first jobbers they might be the early jobbers they're worried that possibly they might be the first one to lose the jobs and they are the one who are relatively more 
pessimistic in comparison to other age groups. So let's, let's do a quick poll here. Uh, the question here to all the everybody in the audience. In how many months you think or, or do, you, do you really believe that the situation will become normal in the next two months in Vietnam? So do you think the situation in Vietnam will become normal in the next two months? So we've got another 20 seconds for the poll to close. Also another five or 10 seconds. Ở câu hỏi này chúng ta sẽ có thêm 5 giây nữa. Bây giờ Bảo Tâm sẽ đóng câu hỏi và chia sẻ kết quả. Xin cảm ơn tất cả các anh chị tham gia trong phần này. Và đây chính là kết quả mà các anh chị anh thấy, à, tất cả các anh chị chúng ta đang thấy ở câu hỏi ở cái phần chia sẻ này Dan Razi sẽ có thêm một số nhận định các anh chị chúng ta đợi trong vòng 1 2 giây nữa nhé. Sure Jessica, so uh, can you possibly just share the results? Yeah, sure. 63% people say yes, they believe we will cover to the normal in two months. Fantastic. So I think uh, everybody in the in the audience, I think which is far better. So when we compare this data in comparison to other countries, uh, I think Vietnam as a as an economy and the entire consumer sentiments are relatively more positive, which means I think people have almost I think by July things will definitely go back to normal. That's what everybody feels. And and the, and hopefully the economy will start bouncing back post that. So, so let's look at what businesses are saying. So previously what we saw is what consumers are feeling and what are they saying. Let's see how organizations are responding to the entire COVID situation. So did they disrupt the daily life? Of course, 70% uh, of the organizations, they feel that their daily life has been disrupted. And when you look at the entire forecast, uh, even I think if you look at the entire Asian Development Bank forecast, it seems that COVID has an impact and a lot of economies are projecting a negative growth, including Vietnam. But it's still Vietnam projection of better than other economies like Hong Kong or Thailand or Singapore, which is relatively more resilient, also driven by a lot of domestic consumption. Though there's the PMI index, which is the purchasing manager index, which talks about the entire manufacturing, it has dropped in April. But our belief is that post July, things will go back to normal, which is a matter of a couple of months. So when we ask this question to, to the business, to the organizations, how many months it will take back for things to become normal, they're not as optimistic as consumers. They feel that it will take close to six months for things to become normal. And this is more of a reflection of industries like automotives, white goods. FMCG e-commerce are relatively more positive or telecommunication are relatively more positive, but other industries like hospitality, aviation is, is, is some are the industries which are relatively more pessimistic. They feel that it might take even close to eight to nine months for things to become normal. So how are businesses coping up in Vietnam? What companies are doing? They are uh, freezing the hiring budgets, which means they're not recruiting. They're cutting down on OH budgets, which is across different economies. We are seeing a very consistent pattern. Some clients are also cutting down on ATL spends like TV. Yeah, just, we can always discuss and debate whether it's the right thing to do, but these categories are the categories which have been impacted because of COVID, especially aviation, as I mentioned, white goods. These are some of the categories which are cutting down on their HL spends. Some of them are also definitely the market research projects. And how businesses are reacting, where are they likely to spend more money? They're likely to spend more money on digital budgets which is very consistent to other countries. But one thing that I see a bit different in Vietnam, companies are also saying that they are going to increase their sales promotion budget. Now, when we look at this data in India or Singapore or Indonesia, these percentages are not that high. So in other countries, people are talking about digital and they're talking about e-commerce selling. 
But in other countries, people are not waking up to sales promotion budget. But in Vietnam, companies have started more of the using their sales promotion to attract the consumers to ensure that they are not the sales get an uplift at least in the short term. And some of the companies are also considering relooking at their supply chain so that they can directly reach out to the consumers to improve their sales. So we ask also the organizations, uh, do they feel that these online influencers or web influencers, they play a very, very, very big role? In comparison to other countries, you can see in Vietnam people, they believe that in, if influencers recommend something, they're more likely to buy it. So consumers, they, they like influencers, recommendations, celebrities recommendations, that plays a very, very big role in Vietnam. And as the world becoming more digital, we believe that influencer as a influencer marketing is going to play a more critical role. So let's go back to our second poll. Just, uh, we're gonna spend almost 45 to 50 seconds on this. The question here is, do you think that digital marketing spend will go up in your own organization? Do you feel that your digital marketing spend will go up in your own organizations? If yes, then what is the percentage of that increase that you're likely to have in the near future? Xin mời tất cả các anh chị chúng ta cùng tham gia cái poll này. Tất cả các anh chị có tin rằng là chúng ta sẽ chi tiêu nhiều hơn cho digital marketing trong thời gian tới hay không? Về cốc độ của MMA thì chúng tôi tin rằng là cái ngân sách này sẽ tiếp tục tăng nữa và thậm chí là trong khoảng thời gian dịch thì cái khoản ngân sách này nó cũng không hẳn là bị cắt đi rất nhiều và rất Chúc mong các anh chị sẽ tham gia trong cái bộ này. Chúng ta sẽ có thêm 10 giây nữa. Sau đó tôi sẽ đóng cái bộ này lại. Xin cảm ơn tất cả các anh chị chúng ta cùng tham gia à, trong cái quiz bộ này. Và bây giờ Bái Tâm sẽ xin đóng bộ này là chia sẻ kết quả. Ở cái bộ này thì tất cả các anh chị chúng ta đợi thêm một chút xíu, một hai giây nữa để speaker chúng ta nhận được cái kết quả thì anh sẽ chia sẻ thêm cho chúng ta. Tất cả mọi người đợi thêm một chút xíu nha. Um, okay, Razi. Sure, I think you've got a result. So, yeah. So it seems around. Uh, I think if if I just look at the average of the data, it seems that the increase in digital spends is going to be around twenty twenty five percent. So that seems to be the normal increase in digital spends. So I think this is what we are seeing consistently. In other markets like Indonesia, the average was close to forty percent. So possibly in Vietnam, the average is around twenty five percent, but Again, I think this is what we are seeing across the entire region, where clients are spending more money on digital. So let's, let's see with this entire COVID situation, what is the consumption impact and what possibly is going to be the new normal? So what consumers are doing, very consistent in comparison to other countries. People are spending, their, their consumption, their entire habits towards health and hygiene has gone up. So people are washing their hands, they're exercising at home, because they're spending money, at, is spending time at home. So there's more fruits, more natural products, consumption has gone up, drinking water has gone up. So anything which has to do with health and well-being has gone up. So that seems to be almost like a new trend, and I believe hand sanitizers, hand washing, this will possibly continue. Eating at home in the future might drop a bit to where it is right now, but that's still going to continue to a larger extent. So what consumers are doing right now, they're stocking up, they're stocking up food, of course, because they're spending relatively more time at home. They're stocking up a lot of kids' product because uh, the schools are closed as of now. They're likely to hope open sometime very soon. And this is very consistent to what we see in Kantar home panel data, where we see the entire FMCG growth up uh, the entire FMCG has gone about around 20% in the first two or three months, which again uh, talks about the entire consumption at home, which has gone up uh, across categories. So what's going down in Vietnam, uh, which is very consistent to other markets, eating outside has gone down. It might go up, but it's not going to really go up in a big way in the near time. I believe it will take some time for people to get the confidence to start eating outside like the way they were doing before. The entire public transportation going to gym has gone down. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that you will see in, in uh, Vietnam, people are downloading a lot of fitness apps. So a lot of fitness apps have been downloaded. Uh, people are buying more fitness equipments. 
so that they can exercise at home. Traveling has gone down, whether it's a domestic or international travel that has really suffered in the in the last few months, and that will take a bit of time. My belief is that it will take another four or five months for for people for consumers to get the confidence to start traveling by using flights or by using the public transportation. Online shopping, as we saw in other countries, has got a big boost during COVID, and I think it's here to stay for a long. Using applications, people are downloaded more apps. They use they're buying groceries using apps. They are doing a lot of e-commerce shopping. Usage of credit card has gone up a bit in in Vietnam. So going to nearby stores have gone down, but what is happening with the baskets? Basket size is increasing. So people are not going as often as they used to go to hypermarket and supermarket. So their frequency of going out has gone down, but their basket size have gone up. So people are stocking up, they're buying big packs. So that has gone up because the frequency of going out has gone down. And as you also saw, see in Kantar data, the online FMCG shopping has gone up. It has almost gone up four times in the last couple of years. So if you look at the trend recent it has almost doubled. The penetration has almost doubled in the last few months or almost in the last one year. And I think this is going to go up. This is almost going to be the new normal where a lot of FMCG categories, groceries, people will continue to buy online. So I think e commerce is, is here to stay for a long. Penetrations are still lesser, but I think there's a big way that e commerce will get a boost driven that people are not used to buying online. They, they will continue buying online as, as the world moves post, post COVID. And what are the other categories that people are buying? As I mentioned before, a uh, lot of staples, a lot of household products are being purchased more. So that is something that we are seeing as a big increase across different economies. The data is very, very consistent and the pattern is very consistent. And what is dropping? During this time, cigarette category is going down. Alcoholic drinks have gone down. Makeup as a category has gone down. So skin care has gone up, but makeup as a category has gone down because people are not going out as much. So the entire makeup has seen a decline overall, but though skin care possibly is still okay. Non-alcoholic sugar drink has also suffered a bit during this time. As people are trying to move towards more health and they're, they're becoming more conscious I think this entire last two or three months have taught us that health is wealth and health and well being is important. And that possibly is going to be the trend for the future. Natural products are uh, thinking about more fitness, thinking about how you can control uh, things which possibly your body doesn't need. It's going to be the trend for the future. So let's go back to the third uh, poll question. So do you think consumers are going to continue buying FMCG products online or will they shift back to offline? So do you think that consumers will continue buying fast moving consumer goods products online? Is it here to stay for the long? Dạ, ở phần này xin mời tất cả anh chị chúng ta cũng tham gia cái poll này. Tất cả các anh chị có tin rằng người tiêu dùng sẽ tiếp tục mua sắm online cho các sản phẩm FMCG hay không? Chúng ta sẽ có thêm 10 giây nữa. Xin mời tất cả các anh chị chúng ta cùng tham gia. Xin cảm ơn. Chúng ta thấy là người tiêu dùng đã mua sắm rất nhiều trên online, đặc biệt là các sản phẩm thiết yếu, các sản phẩm chăm sóc cá nhân. Thì chúng ta xem thử nó có phải là một cái trend trong thời gian tới nữa hay không nhé. Bây giờ Bích Tâm xin đóng cái poll này và chia sẻ kết quả. Brazil, so we have 85% people say yes. Sure, so I think a lot of us agree that this is going to be possibly the new normal of of e-commerce, which is always about fashion and electronics before, but people will continue buying grocery even post post COVID. So let's see how consumer behavior has changed during this time. So as as we all know, as all of us are spending more time at home, so the watching TV has gone up. 
But uh, apart from watching TV, a lot of online activities have gone up. People are watching more videos on YouTube. They're playing more online games. They're reading more books online. They're using a lot of more OTT like Netflix. Work at, out at home and yoga, mobile apps have gone up. So their entire online activities has, has gone up and there are a lot of new categories that people have added in the last one month. Hi, Jessica. Yes. <laughs> I just said we do it again, so I'm sure you can set a slide. Yeah, great. So when we ask consumers, what are the new categories that they've tried in the last one month? E-learning, so a lot of consumers are moving towards e-learning, online cooking, work from home softwares, online grocery, OTT, e-consultation. So everything which is, has to do with around e, which is e-reading, e-consultation, e-learning, uh, downloading fitness apps, all of these things have gone up in the last one month. And I think, a lot of them are possibly are here to stay for a long. And that's why one of the reasons that you see the digital spend, which have been very traditionally being diverted towards Facebook or Google, you might see a lot of those digital spends might somehow possibly get in areas like video games. So you will see a lot of more diversification of the digital spends as we move forward. So what businesses they believe consumers are going to do. So businesses or organizations that believe consumers are going to cons keep on consuming more, news consumption will go up, digital or TV. Consumers will play, play more online games. And online blogging, I think that's one of the big thing which is emerging in Vietnam, is still a trend for the future, that the entire video blogging is going to go up as well as the online games. So these are the trends which are, are here to stay for long. Something that we can look at as marketers, that how we can benefit advertising through these channels. They might not be expensive, they might be niche, especially when we want to target the younger segment, how we can use some of these channels to, to improve our targeting. So what's trending up? TikTok across the world, TikTok is trending up. But we, we also see some of the games, which are very much Vietnamese games have, have gone up. And some of them are featuring in the top 10, top 100, in the last one month. So there are a lot of games that people are playing online. And there are some of the things which have been trending up in Vietnam. So let's go back to the next poll, a quick one. As you can see, everybody is trying to move towards e-commerce. Every company is trying to move towards e-commerce, but are we e-commerce ready is a big question. Or are your organizations e-commerce ready? Or do you feel that you, your team or your organization has the necessary infrastructure and technology for e-commerce sales? Xin mời tất cả các anh chị chúng ta sẽ tham gia trong cái poll này. Tất cả các anh chị có nghĩ rằng công ty của mình cần phải có sự chuẩn bị những cái cơ sở hạ tầng cần thiết cũng như công nghệ cần thiết để mà mình có thể chuẩn bị cho cái phần e-commerce hay không? Có thể nói điều này cũng là một phần rất là quan trọng vì vì khi hành viên người tiêu dùng thay đổi thì e-commerce đang mở ra một cái cơ hội rất là lớn. Như vậy chúng ta sẽ nghĩ gì đối với những doanh nghiệp chưa bao giờ thực hiện e-commerce? Như vậy đâu là những cái bước chuẩn bị cần thiết thì câu hỏi này nó sẽ giúp chúng ta hiểu thêm về phần đó. Chúng ta sẽ đóng cái bôn này trong vòng 2 giây nữa. Bây giờ Bách Tâm sẽ đóng luôn cái bôn này. Xin cảm ơn tất cả các anh chị đã tham gia. Và đây là chúng ta có kết quả. Brazil, we have a 72% people say yes. Which is great. So I think, uh, so what has happened possibly, you know, rather than waiting and watching, a lot of organizations have become ready in the last few months and, and possibly a couple of years. And it's very consistent that we see in other countries, including Indonesia, where 80% companies, they mentioned that they're e-commerce ready. And I think, uh, I believe the world is changing very, very fast, but it's good to see that organizations are adapting to that change so quickly. So let's see how brands are responding. Some examples of how brands are responding in Vietnam. Uh, I just thought of putting some of those examples to inspire every, everybody in the room. So what consumers they want, the consumers they want the brands to tell them that the products are, are safe to use. So I think safety has become a big concern. And consumers, they want the products of brands which are safe to be, to be for their consumption. That is, I think, the number one thing which is emerging. And they don't want brands to be opportunistic. They want brands to teach them, brands to educate them, brands to inform them, and possibly contribute better for the entire society. So let's see how brands are responding in Vietnam. Uh, we did pick up a lot of examples across the entire region where brands are not just thinking for themselves. There's a lot of contribution which has been done 
by various companies, Nestle being one of them. Coke has done a lot of CSR activities in Vietnam, which I think is, is great to see. Companies are making effort to go beyond just selling themselves. They're, they're, and especially the big companies are leading the way. They're trying to give back to the society. And the entire message is, I think, because health has become, or safety has become such a key concern right now. Uh, for example, California Fitness Gym, they came up with a big campaign about hygiene and safety inside the gym. I think that's also true for the entire restaurants or retail business. Because they're going to possibly suffer in the next six months. Uh, people will be worried of going to gym. They might just think, okay, you know, let me exercise at home. Let me just order food at home, or let, let me just cook at home. So how the entire gym, retail, uh, F&B segments, how do they educate consumers? How they can they convince their consumers that that they're taking every precaution to ensure that the safety is maintained and the hygiene is maintained is going to be a big challenge. But I think again, you know, uh, there's also a big opportunity. Whoever convinces consumers better can get the biggest share of the wallet. Other example, which is from BTS, that they came up, came up with the concept of proudly made in Vietnam. And this is one of the trends that we're seeing the, in the entire region, I think, supporting a local industry, supporting the local entrepreneurs have become a big trend in the last couple of years, especially right now. I think this, this entire campaign of proudly made in Vietnam has become very, very popular in, in Vietnam. And so, and we do see numerous examples of different, different companies across the region, possibly trying to communicate made in India, proudly made in Vietnam, very similar campaigns that people are, are coming up to, to link back better back to the, to the local economy and the country and the consumers. Preparing for contactless future, I think this campaign of Grab has been very much replicated in entire the, across the region. You talk about Domino's, Grab, KFC, Gojek. Everybody is now communicating the contactless delivery. They're trying to convince consumers that you can still order from KFC. It's safe. Our processes are good. A lot of people have gone into live streaming of their kitchens. So a lot of restaurants which, which saw a big drop in sales, they want to convince consumers by looking at their kitchens live, that you can see your food being cooked live, and and what else uh, possibly that possibly can convince our consumers to feel that though I can't go inside the kitchen, but I can see a lot of things being cooked live. The product which is del delivered to my doorstep is very much like a contactless uh, delivery. I think a lot of these campaigns are are being used smartly by a lot of companies to convince consumers. So let's see what are the opportunities ahead. Uh, having spoken about this, what is going to be the new normal? I think it's always a big question. We know that Vietnam our consumers are relatively more optimistic. Things are looking much better in Vietnam in comparison to other economies. But health is is a new wealth, and safety and health is here to stay. Products which are able to communicate health, products which are able to communicate that they are safe to be consumed, is going to be the new norm for the future. So it's not about natural products. It's also about for a restaurant, retail, F&B, to think how can they communicate safety. That is going to be here. That's, good. That's going to stay here for a long time. Consumption habits are changing. People are consuming more uh, natural products. They're buying more online. And non online grocery e-commerce is here to stay for a long. And we will con constantly see a big jump and the entire concept of O2O, which is offline to online, is, is now has been accelerated. It has been accelerated in spends. It has been accelerated in marketing, or it also has been accelerated in research. In Vietnam, for example, a lot of traditional research was very face-to-face, -face, but people are moving into online research. And this entire concept of digital research or digital marketing is going to continue, or digital buying is going to continue for a long. Which also about the entire social media and the media habits, which is games, social media. I think that's here to stay for a long, and it's constantly going to increase. I'm not saying that TV is not relevant, but TV will TV become a new radio, which is just there at the background. Possibly yes. Uh, will spend on TV continue constantly go up? I think they still will go up, but people might just look at things how they kind of balance between TV and digital is going to be a big change. 
challenge moving forward. Work and education will work from home become the new norm to some extent, yes, in some categories, but not everywhere. But work from home will increase versus pre COVID. I think all of us have learned to work from home to a larger extent. We know that, you know, possibly uh, remote working is also possible that we didn't know before. We wanted team to be sitting sitting next to each other. I'm not saying that that's not important. I think for, for the entire mental health being, that's important. But work from home, possibly three days a week at office, four days a week at office, and might be three days a week at home. Those some shifts might happen as we move forward in our in our world. So what are the big opportunities? We all know that how e-commerce has is getting boost, boosted with the entire situation, and that's going to continue. But social commerce is going to see a big increase. Conversing on messengers, WeChat, WhatsApp, buying on, the, on, on these channels, chatbot conversations, all of that are, are, are increasing. And I think those channels and purchasing through those channels is going to constantly increase because that allows you to have both ways communication. So it's not one directional communication. The, the advantage of a social commerce or a conversation commerce is that is two ways. And that's going to continue in a big way. And we will see a lot of brands moving towards social commerce or conversational commerce to boost their sales. It's already happening, but it will happen in a bigger way. I think every adversity gives opportunities. You can look at things in two ways. I mean, for my own organization, I, we could have easily sold and thinking about the situation, but we thought, okay, you know, digital research, moving digital, omni-channel feedback, customer experience. Can we collect feedback from a customer on WhatsApp? Can we collect feedback from on, on our chatbots? Can we collect our customer feedback using our CRM data? Can we collect our customer feedback using websites? All of those are different means which are going to emerge, which is omni-channel feedbacks. Now, having said that, I think companies which will keep innovating during this time, I think one very easy way is to, is to go down on the budget cuts. So can, shall we do a budget cut and save money or shall we experiment and innovate? And I think if you look at 2008, if you look, even look at 1998, if you look at all the previous recessions and tough times, during these times, companies which innovated, post-recession, they really grew in their profitability. But it takes a lot of guts to keep spending when everybody is cutting. But leaders are the one, innovators are the one which spend on R&D, they spend on, on marketing rather than cutting those spends, but they, they do it beautifully in a way that they, they balance the revenue with the cost. So it's not about cost cutting, it's also about how you can innovate better, how you can spend better, because post recessions, post tough times, people who will innovate are the one who will come out as winners. So that's the entire, story that I wanted to present today. I think Vietnam looks to be in relatively better shape in comparison to other economies, relatively more positive. And I think uh, in the next two, three months, I believe things are going to be much better in Vietnam as an economy. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, thank you Rajiv. Như tất cả các anh chị thấy là chúng ta có cái phần cơ hội rất là hấp dẫn mà như chúng ta vừa được nghe chia sẻ. Thứ nhất là uh, về online commerce, chứ hay như chúng ta có từ Ccom thì vừa rồi MMA cũng thực hiện với Facebook một cái section về Ccom là đó là một trong những cái trend rất là nổi bật và tất cả các nhãn hàng gần như đều tham gia trong cái phần này thì nó là một cái cũng là một cái phần mà tất cả các anh chị chúng ta đều có thể xem lại cho doanh nghiệp của mình và cái phần thứ hai mà chúng ta thấy là innovation thì ở cái phần này là trước đó MMA cũng đã thực hiện uh, webinar cùng với Pitis, Coca Cola thì tất cả các anh chị thấy là Um, họ đã thực hiện rất là nhiều những cái điều khác nhau Nó không chỉ là về CEO mà chúng ta thấy là về mặt sản phẩm Ví dụ như BTS đã ra một cái sản phẩm gọi là Browly Made in Việt Nam Với rất nhiều những cái sự sáng tạo mới Cả cả ví dụ chúng ta thấy về bánh mì ABC Việt Nam Khi người ta làm bánh mì thanh long chẳng hạn Hay là cả cả con cưng Vừa rồi mình có một cái section với con cưng Thì họ đã thay đổi toàn bộ thời gian giao hàng Thay vì trước đây giao hàng trong ngày Thì bây giờ họ có thể giao hàng trong vòng 1 tiếng, 2 tiếng theo yêu cầu của khách hàng của họ và đó là chúng ta thấy đó là những cái sự cải thiện về mặt sản phẩm, họ muốn đem lại những cái trải nghiệm mới hơn cho khách hàng của mình. Mà and uh, right now Rohit, can you start the question session now? Và bây giờ chúng ta sẽ đến với cái phần uh, câu hỏi. Chúng ta nhận được uh, chúng tôi đã nhận được rất nhiều câu hỏi từ tất cả các anh chị và chúng ta sẽ có anh Rohit that were the managing director MMA Asia Pacific. He will he will handle the Q&A session. 
please welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. So uh, the first question that we have uh, is, um, it was very insightful, Rajiv. I think this survey is really helpful. And uh, I think it gives a huge amount of impetence to the industry in Vietnam. So with regard to that, the first question that we have is, in the two fields of uh, FNB and FMCG, what are the main pain points that the customers go through during and after the epidemic season? Uh, very interesting. So I think uh, if I have to talk about food and beverages, I think the main pain points will be uh, possibly dining, uh, sitting there and still feeling safe. I think it's, it's, a, it's a major concern right now. Uh, can I just go and sit in a restaurant like the way I should sit before? Is the food safely been prepared? Even if I'm ordering the food, uh, how confident I am, that is not going to impact my health. I think these, I believe, are the big pain points that consumers have when it comes to food and beverages. And uh, I think uh, that's one of the reasons when we are seeing a lot of examples of, you know, a lot of companies are looking at, a lot of restaurants have started live kitchen. I think this entire concept is just for people to view that how the food has been prepared, what steps companies are, are taking, what SOPs are they following to ensure that the food is being safely prepared, temperature screening has been done. So I think those, I, I believe, are the big pain points uh, that a lot of companies have to address, which is all about safety you know, to a larger extent. Secondly, I think to the field of fast-moving consumer goods, I think to, to fast moving consumer goods, pain points to some extent can still be very similar. You know, for example, uh, is, is the manufacturing, because you know, when the food comes as a packaged product, what SOPs have been done at a manufacturing level within the plant, within, within the entire manufacturing of the product, again, is a concern. So I think how we can possibly innovate around packaging to, to convey the entire safety is something that I think can be a deep, thought that a lot of consumers they have. And I think again, going back to FMCGs, uh, I think I'll say more than FMCG, it's more about going back to the to the marts. Can I go frequently to a shopping mart like the way I used to go before? What precautions they are taking to ensure that my food is safely being kept uh, are, are some of the concerns that consumers they might have. Hi, Roy. Yeah. So those are my couple of thoughts on, on FMB and FMC. Okay. Thank you. So we have the next question. Uh, the next question is also on, uh, on similar segment, uh, industry segment basis. So the question is uh, more, more structured on the, on the work from home. And it is about how the culture is changing. And I guess it's also very important to see that COVID-19 and coronavirus has actually transformed a lot of the way that digitization was happening and has actually fast-tracked a lot of it. So the question that really comes is that is working from home more effective and will companies continue to do this as we go forward in the future? I think very interesting question. Uh, I think this, this entire COVID situation has taught many people especially old horses like me uh, i personally got got a lesson i never felt that my team can work from home as effectively as they're, they're done i've got more than 60 people in my own company and i think uh, i felt personally i can take my own personal example and i can i feel that our efficiency has gone up because our travel has gone down so in a way i feel that entire effectiveness have gone up but i I don't think that this is, is only this or that. I think it has to be a mix of both. I think it's important for team to meet each other physically for their own mental well-being. It's important that people they meet clients, their clients and their friends. But I think one lesson is that all of us can have three days of a week at office, possibly two, two days a week at home. Relatively easy to implement in a tech company or agency culture, difficult to implement in a manufacturing setup. But in many other departments like marketing, sales, technology, these things are relatively, I believe, 
not that difficult to implement. I think we, we all have learned the lessons that this can be done, and I think it should be done personally. Again, not entirely week, but possibly two or three days. We can have work from home, two or three days work in the office. Okay. I also believe that this, this, is, this is not going to change. In fact, uh, a lot of companies around the world have actually said that they will ensure that going forward, 20 to 50 percent of their uh, employees uh, on an ongoing basis will be working from home. I think this is the new normal that we all have to get ready for. And I, uh, given that the productivity has not suffered as much as we want, uh, we would have expected. Uh, it is very important to understand that it will create a lot of changes in the way the consumption uh, of content and consumption uh, habits uh, of uh, products and services will also uh, be uh, this. The next question that we have uh, is about uh, e-education. It's, it's interesting. The question is, do you think e-education will become the new norm? And what, how will that impact the schooling system and the whole education system? Uh, I think very interesting question. Uh, I think when, when we talk about the things which becomes the new normal, as I just mentioned, that it's not about this or that. It is always, always possibly, I think moving forward is going to be a mix of both. We are seeing many, many companies in the region. I don't know about e-education per se in Vietnam, which companies are getting popular, but I know some examples in Indonesia, for example, Ruang Guru. In India, there's a company called Baiju's. And I know a lot of our own friends, apart from the data that we saw today, people, our own kids, right? I mean, we they are moving towards this entire e-education concept where the entire education has been happening remotely. People are downloading more of these apps, which are the online education apps. There's a lot of content out there. And kids are learning, or all of us are learning, not only kids, right? We are learning to educate ourselves through, through e-learning. Is it here to stay? Definitely it is. It's going to, will it continues, continuously increase? I believe it is. It will constantly keep on increasing. Will it replace universities? I don't think so. But some trends will definitely happen. But I think, again, physical presence will still be there, that we still will be going to universities and schools and colleges. But I think that entire e-education as a learning platform will keep on rising. So it's, it's going to be a mix of both. And previously, it was all about offline. But I think it's going to be a mix of offline and online together. Yeah, I also I also believe that there will be changes, but I do not expect <clears throat> this to become the new norm because the the engagement and interaction children need uh, when they are at school, the the friendship that they make, the uh, sports that they play, all of that will not happen at home, and I I don't think so. That will be the new norm. There will be a hybrid. I believe there will be a hybrid situation where once once a week or something that they will continue to working uh, to studying from home so that the system and the platform and the education system is actually tuned in to make sure that in in an eventuality of a second wave or something like this similar that happens that the schools and the system um, already has the uh, modalities for making this happen but uh, to to get children not to go to school for all the other engagement because studying is only one part of a school life uh, and an education life and i think it is it is a, a disservice to the children if uh, if they are not uh, given that opportunity like all of us have had so um, i think that is not the new normal in my view i agree but, with you uh, Go ahead, Rajiv. Yeah, right. so I think I, I agree with you. I think at times I believe, you know, us in the organization get too excited with all the changes which are happening. I think the other day I got a very similar question in one of the webinars that I had conducted, which is, is e-medical consultation going to be the new normal? Uh, I don't think, I think, I, I, I still believe, I think it's, it's going to be a mix of both. These are new trends which 
are upcoming, but that is that that is not going to completely replace the offline way of working. So yeah. it's going to be more of a hybrid approach that we will see moving forward. On the on the second wave, <clears throat> will the second wave actually have a bigger impact on the economy than the first wave? Uh, that's the question, and I think this this uh, this question is about. Uh, uh, the kind of recovery that has happened so i'll read out the question which is a pretty long question but it makes sense and the context of this question is important based on the political news published last week vietnam ranked first in two categories health and economic outcomes in ranking of the top 30 countries against covid pandemic the question is with such remarkable reco victory or recovery in vietnam is there a opportunity to break through and develop the economy as many businesses are still having difficulties should business push to grow significantly or slowly recover and grow after this while keeping the other economy i think it's a very interesting question uh, do you have any thoughts on this yeah i think uh, uh, yeah it, it is a very interesting question so what what businesses i think the way i, I interpret it is that what businesses should do in this situation? Isn't that correct, Rohit? Is, is that the right way of interpreting the question? Yeah, I think it's it's more about uh, that Vietnam has recovered and has come out so well on the top and has treat, treats this as a victory. So what should businesses be doing to take advantage out of it? Yeah. So see, I, I, I believe businesses which are nimble and agile and the businesses which are always ready to innovate uh, so, you know, having said that, we all know that retail is going to suffer in midterm or be FNB business, uh, aviation industry. But I think it's all about brand coming up and saying, you know, yeah, we know that this is what it is right now. How I can innovate around those things? How I can, if I can't have, if I have to implement social distancing, how I can possibly impl implement in a way that I can still have dine-in? Or how I can improve away my takeaway system, how I can start delivering directly to the doorstep of consumers. So my belief is that uh, I think, as I said, opportunity in the diversity, people who innovate faster, they still come out of every crisis faster. So my thought is that businesses will they have difficulty? They will have difficulty, but people who will implement better ideas, who will implement it faster, are the one who will continue to grow. But just being where we were before and following that as a status quo is not going to help. So there's some of some of my thoughts around uh, different sectors. Rohit. Okay. Uh, the next question is: Do you think social listening should be part of the sentiment report? I think so. Yes, social listening ideally should be a part of sentiment report. Uh, we do have some of the data on Google Trends, but not in a big way. But social listening uh, should be a part of sentiment report. Yes, I think, and and that's that that also goes for us as a learning as a company. That moving forward, will people rely only on surveys? Given that there's so much of digital chat happening, so the entire conversation, what we call it, the conversation analysis, social listening, chatbot analysis, uh, the entire conversations around call centers. I think all of this ultimately will converge. So it's not only on a service, but all of these different data sources will converge to ultimately give a report, holistic report to the client. I think that's the future even for our own industry. That's very interesting, Rajiv. Uh, and I think I think what is also very important is to keep in context the the challenges that that are on hand to uh, to actually deal with some of these changes and and what what tends to happen what tends to happen is that uh, when when people are looking at social listening and people are looking at uh, dealing with some of these stats people tend to get swayed either in a positive or a negative manner uh, while while it is good to have it done but i i do recommend everybody on the call so social listening is not a tool that needs to be taken for granted. 
and it's not a tool that should be taken without having understood the what what it means because it can have very diverse effects on very few um, uh, posts and very few articles and it can the sentiment can sway from very positive to very negative very quickly especially in dynam in in scenarios like coronavirus and covid-19 etc so you while while it is important to have that as part of the report it's also very important on a day to day basis for from a business perspective to understand and study that properly because otherwise it may give you the wrong uh, inference on what needs to be done yeah i agree with you rohit so i think uh, it also goes back to the depth of data because sometimes i have seen a lot of companies making conclusions on very basics and very few conversations like you know yes. social listening which is what you are listening on on social media that is now that that has got extended to even a chatbot listening what people are conversing on chatbot but if your line items are very few if the conversation is very few the entire interpretation from that fewer conversations might just lead to a complete different results versus to a to a richer conversation so if anybody has other questions please keep typing uh, we we are trying to answer all the questions that are there uh, uh, tutai has an, asked couple of questions of which we we try to answer uh, and if there are others who have questions please do answer uh, rajiv uh, maybe time for a couple of more questions and then we can call it a day the next question is uh, more on the travel industry and i think this is the most hit travel and transportation industry this and hospitality yeah. this is the worst affected industry um yeah will will it actually show a sign of recovery in the next 2 to 3 months and i think there there are two parts of this question one is will the industry on a whole show recovery and the second is in vietnam will it show recovery i think it will i think uh, you know uh, rohit we have discussed this also possibly before in other webinars so uh, i believe situation has come to a stage where all of us know what which covered kind of world we are living in it's a matter of us taking those precautions and living with it so my belief is that consumers it's not that people will stop traveling of course their the frequency might go down they might take more precautions airlines might take they are already taking more precautions for example in india the domestic airlines has started but then the entire precautions have been taken which is possible to have a gap in between two seats Uh, having enough sanitization around it, uh, educating consumers that what they need to do to take care. It might not go back to pre-COVID level immediately, but I think it will very soon. It will start showing signs of recovery. But will it go back to the level of January or December in Vietnam? Not any time soon. It will take some time, but I think it will start showing recovery in the next couple of months. I believe. I think, and, and it goes back to what the brand does, isn't it? it It's about every aviation industry or every brand to think how I can convince you that that you will be safe in my environment. Beat aviation, beat hotel, beat restaurant. It's all about. I think the onus lies right now lies back not on the government. It lies back on the brands to start communicating and convincing consumers that I'm taking every precaution to ensure that you're safe. Yeah. no i think i think it's also very important from from a society perspective the fabric of the society needs uh, needs to be mended and uh, whatever holes are there and wherever it's been torn if you will uh, needs to be put in place and there's no one party or no one person who can help do it whether it's the government or uh, a leader and everybody has to do their own part to do that but i also believe that on the hospitality and transportation i think there are two clear divisions here one is international transport and travel and hospital hospitality and one is uh, local uh, the, uh, travel and hospitality i think in a lot of countries the recovery of the local tourism local travel local hospitality will start to uh, show signs of recovery international may not be as much because uh, there are restrictions across countries and there are certain countries which are still high on covid cases versus example like vietnam and vietnam may not want to uh, take the chance or uh, uh, 
yeah, take take a chance on uh, getting international travel. So I think it's going to be clearly divided into two parts. So with that, thank you, thank you, Raji, for all 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 your time, uh, your questions, uh, answers, and the presentation. Let me hand it back to Jessica to help us close this because I think we only have a minute left. Yeah, thank so you, thanks, Rahe. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Rohit. Thank you, Rajiv. So, um, đây là một số những cái thông tin của webinar sắp tới. Rất mong các anh chị sẽ cùng tham gia cùng VMA. Và gần nhất là trong thứ sáu này, chúng ta sẽ có webinar ngày 29 tháng 5 cùng với Estima. Họ sẽ chia sẻ một số những cái insight về các cái campaign ngày Tết, làm sao chúng ta có thể chuẩn bị các campaign ngày Tết trong một cái thời điểm rất là nhạy cảm như hiện nay. Khi mà chúng ta đang trải qua hơn nửa năm bị tác động bởi Covid, tức là chúng ta tính từ Tết tính đến, đến bây giờ. Thì rất mong các anh chị sẽ cùng sign up và chúng ta có thể lên mmacorpo.com Sự quý Vina hoặc là trang fanpage của MMA Việt Nam để cùng đăng ký tham gia Xin cảm ơn tất cả các anh chị đã dành thời gian tham gia cùng với MMA Thank you our speaker Rajiv, thank you Rohit Thank you survey since I'm at Tima to contribute for that report Thank you so much and then have a nice day So I will stop the webinar now, thank you Thank you, thank you Thank you, bye Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.